Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mike and welcome to the vlog. Top three things that you need to survive your solo overlanding experience. Really appreciate all the feedback I got on the original Scout Bowen Customs walk around. I look at this Scout camper as an opportunity to access the outdoors and do it year round. A lot of people do rooftop tent camping and camping on the ground, but where I'm from in Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, Montana, you can't really do that. I mean, you could try, it's just very uncomfortable. And I like being comfortable. Uh, let me give you a little tour real quick of how beautiful it is out here in the middle of a private ranch tied to a lot of national forest. Gets me the opportunity to kind of solo camp and get away. When I camp and when I get away, what I wanna do is, I say that as I have the Starlink RV right here. Um, when I do that, I, I try to get away but it's just not about camping in one spot. It's about camping or setting up my base and then being able to adventure outside of that location. So in this destination, I get to go hiking and camping with friends beyond the actual rig. And so this is my base of operations. So when I think about top three things that you need to always kind of carry, especially when solo adventuring or solo camping or solo overlanding, I think about two things. One what can i have in my vehicle that's going to be able to upgrade my level of independence and reliance and also what happens if i want to displace from the vehicle i'm in like this is perfect time for backcountry hiking right before the snow gets too severe where it might be appropriate for backcountry skiing or um you know snowshoeing if i displace from this vehicle the things that i have that make this vehicle great that are in the Bowen custom drawers, like my rifle. I can't necessarily bring that on a hike. So if I have the ability to kind of break down kit and go beyond this base camp and operate the outdoors, then that's what I want to think about. I want to think about like a static option and a mobile option. So the number one thing I uh, always prioritize is security. Uh, I, I hope that you think about security often, and that for me starts with self-defense or self-protection. It's unfortunate that we live in a day where people try to take advantage of other people, um, especially when they're isolated and by themselves in the middle of nowhere. Um, but I'm going to carry a firearm on person at all times, which is why the number one thing that I consider is self-defense. So, Phil Craft Fanny Pack, um, in this particular case, on this particular day, HKP7. This HKP7 has a trigger mechanism that activates a trigger bar when you uh, grab the grip of the firearm and you squeeze it. Now, a lot of people are like, why would you carry an HKP7? They're like pretty expensive um, and they don't really make them. I mean, you can't see them at your local gun shop. Rarely will you see these in circulation, but I'm a big fan of it because I'm a fan of HK, but it's like the perfect form factor for my fanny pack. Now, I do have like the 365XL, the Macro, all these different versions, but I like this because it's in my waistband. It's getting knocked around, even though I have a a, a guard for the trigger. Um, there's no chance of this gun going boom unless this grip is activated. Now, really, I'm just carrying it because I like it. I like the convenience of it. So sometimes I change up, well, often I change up my everyday carry depending on what I'm doing. And so I want the benefit of having this on my person at all times where I have ready access. So if I'm just sitting in the camper, yeah, I might have it. Um, if I'm just walking around, I'm definitely going to have it. Now you see, I've given it away. Like I have a, a rifle here. Um, on the way in, I just saw a dead coyote on the uh, side of the ground where a rancher or a local farmer probably took him out. But this is a Bravo Company manufacturing AR, with a one to eight variable magnification optic made by Leopold, it's a CQBSS, and I got a CGS can on this. Um, CGS makes great cans. Um, and this setup for me is not only for predators, coyotes, um, it's also for self-defense. So have different levels of security depending on how you're set up. This is in the cab of the Scout. My pistol is on my person at all times if i go camping i'm not likely to take my rifle but i'm going to have this on my person at all times so again the static and the mobile version of that 
So let's talk about the number two thing that I hope you always carry at all times. Which is first aid. Look, first aid is super important, especially when by yourself. Like I don't do any of this stuff because I'm gonna get closer to people and be around more people. I do it because I wanna be further away from people. So when I, I have first aid on my vehicle, the static location of it, it's on a panel pack where, where it's readily accessible. So the idea is I could reach behind my seat, grab what I need to do, and then get to work treating first aid. And grab this, rip this away, it's good to go, put it back. Um, or I could pull it away and put it inside my backpack. I could take it in the Scout Camper co-located with me. What does it include? Well, at a minimum, everything you need to stop the bleed, a Cat 7 tourniquet, um, a stop the bleed kit made by my company, Philcraft. We do that as well. But if I had to take this and go mobile, I could do that as well. I could remove the top, I could remove the bottom, and then just this turns into a backpack and I could take it on the go. The idea ultimately for me is there's no excuse not to have first aid or your kit with you at all times. Like you wanna be able to have that. So that's important. Let's talk about the third thing I think is most important, especially in these conditions where it's pretty cold, man. I mean, I like the cold, but I also like being comfortable. And right now I'm sitting out here with a diesel heater. I mean, check this out. And that's convenient. Um, but I also have this on board. Uh, big shout out to Bowen Customs for all the real estate. I mean, look at this. I got all my ammo, all the stuff I train with, maintenance, recovery, and then the whole through flame locks. So burns up to three hours, takes less than five minutes, and this activates really quickly all the things you need to do to get a, a fire going, especially in cold and wet. And this isn't just the fire source because you're going to need wood. I keep wood and that big portion of it. But this allows me to have um, really quickly to get a fire going and to get it burning hot, whether it's signal or keeping my core body temperature warm or just enjoying the outdoors and recreation. I mean, you can hear the wind through the camera. It's cold, it's wet, it's snowy. Um, I wanna be able to start a fire fast. So that extends into here where I have a fire starter, I have a, a lighter, and then on board I have diesel, I have uh, propane, I have this, I have wood, um, I have a hatchet right here. So have the ability to start a fire and, and maintain your core body temperature. A lot of people die from the extremes, which is just natural exposure where they get hypothermia. So keeping this on board is real cool and it's convenient when you have a Bowen custom setup, but you can keep that in your in the trunk of your vehicle uh, in the back of your truck in a tough box, whatever it might be. So yeah, guys, real quick, I just wanted to give you a quick tour of some of the priorities that I look at. Security, um, most definitely, that's priority for me, especially in the back country. Uh, against predators, against people, whatever it may be. Number two, first aid. Always have first aid on your person. I have a tourniquet in this fanny pack have a more robust system that I'm capable of carrying uh, in the vehicle and displacing from the vehicle, and most certainly have survival contingencies, including fire. I'm interested to know what three you recommend. There's a whole bunch more that I'm, uh, I'm skipping over, but if you recommend the top three, what would they be? Leave that in the comments below. Hit the subscription notification tab, and I appreciate you guys tuning in. Until next time. Oh, and by the way, come and join us for a Philcraft Mobility Experience. We'll be doing that really soon. It's already advertised on the website. Uh, it's me, Mike Hernandez. We teach uh, overlanding, maintenance, recovery, survival, security, all the good stuff uh, as a baseline for everything we do in overlanding. Uh, and we hope to see you at Overland Expo as well. Till next time. Peace out, guys.